Over three years after Quake 2 came back from the dead to wreck RTX PCs with its path traced lighting, reflections and global illumination, Portal RTX has respawned to finish the job. Top-end RTX 4080 Ti and 4090 powered desktops now struggle to run this decade and a half old classic. So what hope do I have with a £600 secondhand laptop? Two thousand seven's iconic first person puzzle game Portal was never exactly demanding. Its clinical aesthetic and minimalist architecture, all derived from the Source engine developed for Half Life 2, create a dystopian vision of the future where humans exist merely to be experimented on by authoritarian AI. They also make the game pretty trivial to render, especially compared to something as detailed and chaotic as, say, Rapture. The newly released RTX Remix version of Portal, however, is far from trivial. With hardware path tracing, every light casts realistic rays, every surface reflects those rays of light at least once, and every object casts a shadow whose shape and position is calculated in real time. Effects like this require dedicated hardware, and even going into 2023 that hardware is not universal. Perhaps one day RT will be as cheap to render as tessellation and anti-aliasing, but that day is still a long way off. I hear even the latest and greatest Lovelace GPUs struggle with Portal RTX at full resolution. I don't have an RTX 4000 card. I do have an RTX 3070 in my editing rig, but as even that card will involve compromising on quality settings. I've decided to skip straight to the weakest RT-enabled GPU I own. This is a Razer Blade base model from 2020. It has a Turing-based RTX 2060 Max-Q, a power-limited mobile variant of the entry-level RTX GPU from that series. This allows the laptop some decent gaming performance at 1080, while remaining slim and lightweight, at least by gaming laptop standards. Unfortunately, this slimness and lightness comes at a cost. The Intel i7-10750H CPU powering the PC runs pretty damn hot and doesn't have any provision for undervolting without some crazy BIOS editing. As the RTX 2060 Max-Q shares a cooling system with that miniature furnace, it's reasonable to expect this lower TDP chip not to have the performance of a full-fat desktop GPU. Aware of the limitations of the hardware, I plan to go through with this test using the high preset, which is the lower of the two quality presets in Portal RTX, but that proved somewhat problematic. In certain scenes, the frame rate would plummet below the already atrocious numbers it had been doing. Thankfully, there are wiser people out there than me, and one of them is Alex Battaglia over at Digital Foundry. Alex, as he so often does, has put together two optimised quality setups for Portal RTX one for higher-end cards and one for lower-end ones. The low-end optimised setup is below the high preset with reduced light bounces but still retaining volumetrics. With these custom settings loaded up, I started a quick run through the first few test chambers using full 1080 with no resolution scaling. The result was… well, I've seen worse but not recently. Frames peaked at maybe 11, 12 FPS and dipped as low as 5. It's not unplayable, weirdly enough. Only a couple of later test chambers require much in the way of reaction times, and I dare say you'll have developed a headache and quit by then. Still, I'm sure you'd prefer to have a more fluid, less painful experience in Portal RTX, and that's what DLSS is for. Turning on quality DLSS does about what you'd hope for, all things being equal. With a drop to 66% render scaling, FPS almost doubles into the high teens and low 20s. The full resolution 1080 option doesn't have any form of anti-aliasing. All of the AA options are kept in the same super sampling menu as DLSS, and the original game's SMAA is in a different menu that the game suggests you leave alone. Arguably, quality DLSS actually looks a little smoother and more polished than the raw, slightly jagged full resolution option that only runs at 10 FPS half the time. Playability is improved, as you'd expect, and things are definitely more enjoyable this way. Though, of course, you might still hope for better. Dropping DLSS to balanced, and I think this has to be the best solution on this GPU. 
FPS is in the high 20s, though in busy scenes with lots of light sources, it can drop into the high teens. Image quality suffers, no doubt, especially if you explore some of the less pristine areas of the Aperture testing facility, whereby the DLSS ghosting artifacts start to make themselves known. In truth though, for the most part, this isn't a big deal. The DF optimised low settings help the game run at acceptable frame rates, sure, but they also mean that denoising artifacts are very much noticeable. If you're going to have to live with those quite distracting artifacts, it's hard to then complain about a few more motion artifacts on top of it. This is all part of the deal when playing fully path trace games on low end ray tracing hardware. Naturally, these artifacts only get worse the further you drop the render resolution. DLSS performance runs in the high 30s and low 40s, but image quality starts to degrade, and while we've accepted that temporal artifacts are now a way of life, it's getting harder to ignore that under all this wizardry, this is only a 540p image. Pushing to ultra performance doesn't have the desired impact, only lifting FPS occasionally into the low 50s, but mostly hanging around just above the performance numbers, and artifacts are now distressingly obvious. In conclusion, if you want to play one of the best puzzle games of the last 20 years, uh, hurry through the regular non-RTX version of Portal in a few hours and then play Portal 2. Yes, the original game has a certain purity and simplicity that's appealing, the lack of fixed narrative makes it ideal to just pick up and play, and Still Alive is a better song than Want You Gone. This was a triumph. With all that being said, the GLaDOS we all know and love is only barely developed at this point, and the sequel establishes not only her character, but also Wheatley and Cave Johnson. Well, I mean, it's actually just Stephen Merchant and J.K. Simmons being their usual selves, but that's not really a bad thing, is it? If you want a stunning tech demo to show off your new RTX graphics card, Portal RTX is exactly that. However, Showing off only really works if other people are impressed, and I don't think running at 18 FPS at reduced settings or 40 FPS with potato quality is gonna impress anyone. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.